In this video, I'm going to show you how to base your miniatures quickly and easily using technical paints. We're going to be using sterling mud for most of our examples, but I've also got some Armageddon dust here and some Martian iron earth. And I see so many people just paint these straight onto their bases and leave those bases simply like that without giving them a bit of razzle dazzle. And it's so easy just to spruce them up a little bit and have a really good basing effect. While I've painted these on these bases already, you don't have to, you can glue your miniature straight on and do the basing effect afterwards. These miniatures have been glued straight onto the original bases and then the basing techniques that I'm going to show you were done with the miniatures in place. It's mainly involving dry brushing and stuff like that. And as you can see from this miniature here, um, some of the dry brushing has gone up the legs a little bit. And that's good. It gives you a, a dusty effect on the legs. So you can leave the you can do the bases beforehand without gluing the miniatures on, or you can glue the miniatures on and then do some basing effects. So essentially, I want to show you how adding just a little bit of color to technical paints makes some really nice bases. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you some techniques on some resin bases. First up, these are the types of brushes you can use. You can get a pack of like these makeup brushes from any superstore for about five, 10 pounds. They're very cheap. You'll get about six brushes. They have these nice flat heads. They're perfect for basing. So I think sterling mud is the best to do bases with. You can do a lot of different, as a base color, you can do a lot of different things with a basic brown. And I just slapped it on there normally. Then we're gonna get some Dawnstone gray. Get a blob of Dawnstone Grey, get most of the Dawnstone Grey off your brush and then just drag it over the top of the miniature. This technique is called dry brushing. And we just keep going and going and going and the grey will lift off of the brown. When you're done, it'll look like this. You'll want to go around the rim to get rid of the grey. But as you can see, just by adding a little bit of grey, it brings a lot more life to the base. And you can leave it like that if you want to. But if you really want to make it pop, get some white. Get some white on your brush. But it's a very, very bright colour. So you want to get quite a lot of the white off your brush. Give it a good wipe over your tissue. And then just, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to drag some white over the top of the gray. And as you can see, now it really pops. Now it really shines. And I think that's the best and quickest way to do some simple bases. Just two layers of dry brush, but we'll put that one aside and we'll show what you what you can do with a few more colors. This time I'm gonna dry brush brown onto brown, Zamizi Desert. Again, get a blob on your brush, Wipe it off on your tissue paper. And then we're gonna drag it over the base. And this time we can be a little bit rougher cause this isn't gonna be our last layer. Then we're going with white again and we're gonna make it pop. Get a lot of white off the brush. And then let's make it pop. Done. Here you can see the difference between the bases and how by just changing one color, a gray to a brown, gives you a completely different effect. You'll notice as well that I'm deliberately choosing bold colors from the layer range, layer Dawnstone, layer Zamizi, and layer White Scar, because these are particularly good with this brush and this type of effect. Another thing you can do with bases to give them a little bit of pop is to add some flocking material or some tufts of grass. I wouldn't mix the two. I would pick one type, the tufts or the grass, one or the other. And when you add them to your miniatures, it just gives them a little bit of height, a little bit of depth on the bases. I use tweezers for this job just to hold the tuft of grass because I always put a little bit of glue underneath. Also, sometimes when you dry brush the bases, you might get the odd smear of paint and it kind of ruins the effect. A tuft of grass stuck on top is really good for hiding those effects, those smears. As for just plain green grass, green flock, using our plain brown base with no paint on whatsoever, we're gonna stick on a few blobs of PVA 
glue, we're going to use the end of our paintbrush to move those blobs around. We then get our base, hold it over your pot of grass, push the grass on top. And once you've layered it in grass, give it a push onto the glue, turn it upside down, tap that off. And when you're done, it will look like this. Bits of the white PVA glue, you better see it at this stage, but later that will disappear as it dries. I think we need to add more green to this on that basic gray with no other colors. It looks a bit naked, doesn't it? Yes, I think that's much better. But what's even better is getting one of the bases that we dry brushed earlier on and doing the same technique. Blobs of PVA glue here or there, dump our grass all over it, give it a push down, tap it off, and it looks like that. Then we're gonna get some Abaddon Black. And then we just paint the rims and um, get rid of some of that overspill that we got from the dry brushing technique and sharpen up the bases. So those are some quick and easy effects you can do with Sterling Mud technical paint. But when you're working with Armageddon Dust, which is a brighter color, skip straight to the white. Don't worry about a, a lighter brown or a gray underneath. And while this technique is easiest with one of these fat wide brushes, you can do it with a normal brush as well. We'll get some white. We're gonna wipe off lots of the white and then we're gonna dry brush the base. And here's the difference between the two bases, a nice deserty effect. Again, if you drag any areas with a bit too much white, then grab a flock of grass, just glue it over the mistake you might have made. And when you're done, it'll look like this, literally just two colors of paint, some flocks of grass, and uh, that's a really nice base. Very quick, very easy. And this is what it looks like with the green grassy effect. As for the rims around the bases, you don't have to paint them all black all the time. As you can see on this custodian, I've done it gray. I think the gray works better on such a light, shiny model. So that's just Dawnstone gray. And we're gonna just paint that all the way around the rim. The color of the rims, completely up to you. Uh, earthy colors work best, browns, grays, blacks. So as you can see, just by adding a little bit of color, a few tufts, you can really bring some technical paints to life when you're basing. Then we come to something like this. Martian Iron Earth. Now, when you paint on Martian Iron Earth, you're gonna leave blobs of material here or there, because those blobs are the bits that crack and leave this, this technical paint effect that you can see. If you just paint it smoothly over the top, you'll get less of the cracking. More blobbing equals more cracking. The problem with the cracking is these things flake away and come off over time, leaving the bare base underneath. So to help glue those cracks in place, we're gonna get some Nuln oil and give it a good shake. Whenever you use oil, make sure to give them a very good shake. We're gonna get a fat brush, stick it straight in the Nuln oil, wash it directly over the base, lots of Nuln oil. And we're also gonna stick our brush in our pot of water to help water down the Nuln oil a little bit. But the oil will help the cracked Martian iron earth stick to the base and not flake off over time. And we'll get back to this at the end of the video once all the Nuln oil has dried and bring it back up again, make it pop again. Then the last thing I wanna show you is what I do with resin bases. One of the most requested requests I get is how do you paint your resin bases? These are from marchofwar.co.uk. Well, quite simply, I'm gonna do the same dry brushing technique that you see there. Just gonna add layers of dry brushing. Here's two different bases. One I've sprayed black straight away. This one I've painted gray. So this is literally chaos black out of a can. And this is Eschen gray. I've done all my iron hands with this base color. So we'll do different layers of dry brush on this one to that one, and we'll get a completely different effect-ish. Starting with Zamizi Desert again. We're getting in most of it off the brush, but not all of it, because about 90% of this we're gonna cover in Zamizi Desert. And in fact, we're gonna have quite a few blobs on there, because after you paint it, sometimes, yes, down in this crack, you can see a little bit of the resin base still. So I'm literally gonna 
painting all the little cracks where I can see some of the original basing coming through. And we're trying to cover 90% of the base and it doesn't matter if there's bits of metal rebar or skulls or anything. We're going for quick, easy technique, effective technique. Splat it all over the thing, covering 90% of the grey that you already put underneath. When you're done, it looks like this and that's just the first layer. After the Zamizi, we're breaking out the Dawnstone. Again, these layer paints are awesome for doing basing. They are thick and they apply very well to the base. Now we've done 100% gray, then we've done 90% brown, then we're gonna do about 40% gray, Dawnstone gray. So wiping off most of our paint and we're just dragging it over the base again one more time it's okay if you blob a bit too much of gray in some places here or there in fact it's quite preferable because it will break up you don't want it to look the same uniform all the way across this is a this is a chunk of earth to be fair when you're done it look like that 40 50 percent dawnstone gray on top so you've got a dark gray you've got a brown you got a light gray you need to let it dry again what really finishes off resin bases though, is a final light dry brush of white. You've got to be careful with white though. Um, try not to get too much on there. Make sure you get a lot off your brush before you start. We can always add more white. I'm wiping it and wiping it and wiping it on my tissue here. Because white, obviously, is a very bright color. And we want it to pop, but not too much. And we drag it all over the base and it'll really make that base pop and when you're done it'll look like that bear in mind that's only about 10 percent white so to get this it's 100 percent dark gray 90 percent brown 50 percent light gray 10 percent white to show you the effect different paints can have on this black one we're going to just do, do a dark brown. We did a, a light brown. Now we're doing a dark brown. Steel Legion drab. And this stage can be as messy as you need it to be. When you're done, it'll look like this. So 90% brown, very little of the black coming through. Then after our brown, we're going to do the same as we did on the other one, which is Dawnstone gray and then a bit of white. And again, it doesn't matter if you've got this kind of smeary effect going on there. You kind of want it. It breaks it up. It's a, a natural thing. The ground isn't all one color. Now, the same with the other base. We're going to put a light layer of white on top, making sure that we're getting a lot of the white off our brush. When you're done, It'll look like this, a darker base with that white pop compared to the other one. It looks like this and I definitely prefer this more earthier, lighter colors on my resin bases than the darker ones. But there's all sorts of things you can do just by adding four different layers of dry brush to the top. The last thing you should do with your resin bases is paint the rim and you paint the rim the base color that you use, the bottom layer that you painted it. So this one's going to be etching gray. This one's going to be black. And here are the resin bases. Once I've painted the rims, one darker, one lighter, but basically the same technique. Now let's get back to our Martian Iron Earth, which is the null null that's dried now. We're going to get some orange. Bit of orange on the brush, but the same technique. Get off as much as you can. Where's my thing? Here's my thing. Get off lots and lots and lots because it is a very bright color. And then Drag it over the top. And you get quite a nice effect once you're done. And uh, the only thing I regret on this one actually is I should have blobbed the Martian Iron Earth a bit more blobbly to make the cracked bits a bit more stand out a bit more. But uh, there we go. Same technique on that base as well. And that's how you do bases quickly and easily with just a simple dry brush technique. 
So instead of painting your technical paints straight on, try a layer or two of dry brush. It really helps bring them to life. You can knock out like 10, 20 bases in an evening. It's really that simple. Hope you found this video useful. Happy Wargaming. Thank you.